We've traveled to the Horn of Africa to meet with one of the continent's most influential businesswomen. Ethiopia is the perfect setting for our scene. Steeped rich in ancient culture, the country straddles between its proud heritage and the growing young population who are eager to shape the new face of Africa. We're here to meet with a lady who has successfully taken the old to redefine the new on both a local and international front. Hello, Beth Leeham. Welcome to African Dream. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. You are the founder of Africa's fastest growing footwear brand. You have stores and outlets across the world. It's a globally recognized brand. Was that your vision when you first created the brand? When I started to Saul Roberts brand 12 years ago, I didn't know that it would be big and it will be international brand, but I knew that I have to start something, something special for me and special for people around me. I grew up in a village with 5,000 people. So uh, these people were working day and night for a little amount of money. So I knew that I had to do something about it. Fresh out of college in 2005, Bethlehem founded Soul Rebels. Tapping into her country's rich artisan heritage, Bethlehem set about reimagining what footwear could be. And today, So Rebels is Africa's fastest growing footwear brand, creating jobs and empowering her local community. The first idea that came to my mind is to use these recycled tires, to use them as a shoes. So these recycled tires were worn by freedom fighters for a long, long time uh, around Ethiopia and people still are using them for different reasons. First, they are cheap. Second, they are very, very durable. So I have seen a lot of people wearing this product, but yet um, they were not marketable enough for international market and local market. So the idea was that, okay, these are talented people around me uh, who can do a very beautiful fabric. And at the same time, people are recycling things each and every day. It's a way of life here in Ethiopia. So how do I combine these two great ideas together to create this product? So I started this company 12 years ago by testing different flip-flops. And actually, people were not probably amazed because they have been around. But when I start selling these products and sending them to international market, the response that I get from the audience was amazing. When I look back uh, 12 years ago, uh, we started with five people. Right now we have more than 600 people working in the company. So it's an amazing journey. Most African entrepreneurs, I guess, they would usually look to the West for their big idea as opposed to locally. So they'll look to the West and try to bring that idea here whereas you did it the other way around. So you had this amazing idea from what you saw locally. Do you think that was the winning formula for So Rebels? And was that a conscious decision on your part? I don't think it was conscious decision. Uh, but from what I understand is people are traveling long ways to bring in different ideas, to copy somebody's idea, to bring into their continent and their country to start a business. But my idea is, Look at who you are as a person, how you grow up. Everything around you is a business idea. When you see a problem, find a solution. Then that's going to be your business plan. I think I saw a quote somewhere that you said you're green by heritage. So as opposed to obviously nowadays, it's very cool to be organic and green. But obviously that's something that Soul Rebels has always been. I think we have been cool forever because um, my culture, the way that I grew up, we don't know any com you know, chemical components. We don't know any packed food. We don't have anything that has you know, an impact on the environment. That's how we grow up. That's how it is still. You speak very passionately about the brand. Soul Rebels has been likened to you know, the, um, the African version of Nike, of Adidas, of Reebok, huge global brands. How do you feel about that? So Rebels brand is much, much uh, bigger than those brands. We're selling an experience. We're not selling a product. We're not trying to fit in somewhere. And the way that we create your need is for you. It's not massively um, produced. To look at you, to meet you, to read up 
on your story and your background, you come across as a very brilliant, successful female entrepreneur. What I'd like to know is what is the makings behind that woman? Um, I think the first thing is that I was the first born in my home. I have three brothers and I always take opportunity around the house. And uh, my mother and father, when they raise us, there is no difference between me and the boys. We do different kinds of work, but uh, it's not, they're not going to specify the job at the house, inside the house. This is, you know, girl's work, this is men's work or boy's work, girls doesn't do this, stuff like that. We never heard like that. I think this is a way that I grow up and it gives me more energy and confidence on what I'm doing. So I'm a married person now. I have three children also. And I think I do have a great supporting system that supports me wherever I go. So I think that's why I'm here. Bethlehem's success speaks for itself. At the age of 35, she's at the forefront of the new Africa, presenting an exciting and dynamic face of African creativity to the global market. And her tenacity as an entrepreneur has set her aside as a formidable female force. We know that in terms of our culture, females tend to be the backbone of communities. You give a female an opportunity, it doesn't just impact her life, it's also her family, her wider community as well. So can you just touch on the importance of ensuring that African women have tools available to them. So whether it's education, whether it's um, internships, just in order for them to better themselves and their community at large. For me, I, I never think because I, I'm a woman, I cannot do this and I'm not going to try this and that. The way I see myself is I'm a person, I am capable of doing whatever I want and I'm going to succeed because I'm going to be working really hard to be there each and every day. So I think for African girls and women to say, I am not going to be able to do this, I'm not capable of doing this, then you're killing yourself. If we are brave enough to go out to sell our ideas to people, I think we can succeed and you know we're gonna have to stop this and we're gonna have to stop like about empowering women about this and that because without knowing it we're creating a thinking in girls and women's mind that they have to have some kind of help to push them around no and you, you mentioned earlier that you're married yes so is your husband very involved in yes very Helps supportive me. in the yeah, business he yeah. works with me yes okay fantastic you have three young children you said mm -hmm. how do you do the balancing act between motherhood and this very successful businesswoman it's very challenging i'm not gonna lie to you it's very challenging but it's all about using your time properly so we work yes we have family time, yes. We do other stuff, yes. And uh, it's all about balancing yourself. What I want to leave for them is a very good, you know, work ethic. And it's not about money, it's not about wealth. Mm. But one thing that you can give to your children is that a knowledge, yeah. a know-how to do mm. something. And then you have to be a living proof for them that mm. you started something and you are here today. And obviously last year we saw you at the GT Bank Fashion Weekend, yes. where you gave an excellent masterclass on how to be a fashion entrepreneur. Um, so how comfortable are you in roles like that, where you go out, you give speeches, you know, people are looking up to you, wanting to hear your take on things. Are you comfortable being a role model to people? You know, I have um, a story to tell to anybody. I start something from scratch and I am very, very proud about what, we have, what I have done, what I have been achieved. So to tell that story for people, it's not something that's written for me. It's my story and I did that. So I'm passionate about it and I'm always happy to share that if that's going to support any young people. And uh, I'm going to continue doing that. And I had a great time. Yeah. Yes. Good. You like Lagos? I love it. It was great to have you there. What inspires you when you wake up in the morning? What makes you get up and do your thing? You know, I always wake up in the morning and I see people who are running around the road to catch up buses, taxis, to go do something. 
that inspires me. That's life for me. So that that life itself inspires me every single day. So um, I think that's where my inspiration comes from. It's <laughs> a very good answer. I like that. Life inspires you. Looking back at your life and your career so far, are there any things that you would have done differently? When you're an entrepreneur, you make a lot of mistakes. That's how you learn. There is no books written for you. There is no guidelines. There is no you know, maps. There is no calculations. You just believe in something and you go for it. You might gonna fail and you're gonna be scared when you fail. But the thing is, you're gonna rise up and you give it all that you have to be successful. And I think that's why we're, you know, an entrepreneur, we're called entrepreneur. We're not traders, we're not merchants, we're not, you know, selling stuff. We are entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's completely different. People have to own to it, you know? It's um, a very unique gift. Okay, so take us through your typical day. From the moment you wake up, how does your day go? I woke up in the morning, probably around 4, 4.30 sometimes, if I'm tired. And I will be out of my house quarter to five, go to the gym, work out, and I go back home, and took my children to school, and then I go to office. And I do that every single day except Sunday. Okay. So you don't have no spare time? Do you, like, what do you do in your spare time? Do you watch TV, any TV Sometimes shows? Sometimes when or? I have time, yes. I watch Empire though. You watch Empire? Yes, okay, I that's a good time. <laughs> Bethlehem's track record has been one of shifting the focus of Africa's development from poverty alleviated by international aid to that of prosperity achieved by local talents and resources. So it's no surprise that her latest venture is close to her heart and very close to her roots. So back in 2013, you were named on CNN's list of women who changed the way we do business along with Coco Chanel, Elizabeth Arden, and Anita Roddick of The Body Shop. You've achieved so much already. What is next for Bethlehem? I just launched a coffee brand. I am very, very excited to share this coffee brand to, to the world, as we did by Sor Robles. We open different stores in major cities. We have about 12 stores. And we want to do the same for the coffee brand, for people to come, enjoy and refresh themselves with Ethiopian finest coffee. Yeah. So that's next. Well, that was actually going to be my next question. <laughs> the fact that we are in this magnificent location, which is of course the Garden of Coffee um, Cafe in Addis Ababa. You guys need to come and visit because the coffee is amazing. Um, so why coffee? I think uh, my responsibility as a person is that to find a very exciting way to share Ethiopian culture to the world. I already did that through Thor Rebels, and I grew up here in Ethiopia. I wake up in the morning, I smell this beautiful coffee roasted by my mom and whoever is around my home. So that's what I want to do. I think um, it's going to be a great, great um, brand. It is great. The coffee is amazing. It is amazing. With all your success, um, you're still living here at home in Addis Ababa. You haven't moved anywhere else. You know, you haven't moved to a beach house in Malibu. Or, you know, and, I mean, you may have a beach house there, but you're still living. I don't. You're still living here. So, what attracts you to home? All my creativity comes from here, mm. and I would love to expand my businesses here. And I feel like there is nothing left for me out there. So that's why I was born here from the beginning. So I would love to, I, I love going different places to take courses, to get educated and stuff like that, which is gonna help me to grow my business. But to stay there, um, I don't think that's gonna be a wise choice. So I'm gonna continue to create different brands from Ethiopia for you know, the international market. Africa is a completely different continent. We are a very colorful people, I love that. We have a big potential, yet we didn't use it, but young people are start uh, leveraging that you know, talent, that culture that we have. And then um, I think the international audience that we have are 
amazed by African culture and gifts that we have, and then they have been leveraged that for a yeah. long time. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for us to take a control and to create our own brands for international market, and we can do a lot. People are coming back, even if they left yeah. for 20 years, 25 years, mm -hmm. because Africa is a to-go place now. So we're gonna welcome others, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So I, I like it here, I love it here. Do you feel like you're living your African dream now? Absolutely. Because I was born here in Ethiopia, um, I'm still living in Ethiopia, and yet I created a global brand. I want to see more Africans create their own brands for the international market and alter it and then control 100%. That's where you can create wealth, that's where you're going to create opportunities for people. My African dream is that. Thank you, Bethlehem. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for the great coffee. Thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay.